Hi, I'm Gord Miller from TSN. You're listening to Missing Curfew. Up Dizzle, Aura Rings, man. Listen, my Aura Rings score for my 10 days in Manhattan was saying, get some rest, meat stick. Get some rest. Get some help. And now look at me. Another week back in Newport, walking, swimming, sleeping. I'm refreshed, rejuvenated. My Aura Ring is happy with me. Getting ready for Super Wednesday, baby. Here That's I come. Sleep is a must my man that's why you're back that's why you're back on the saddle ready to I'm feeling good baby i didn't sleep once in new york but i've been sleeping a lot in newport beach this week our friends at aura ring are introducing the new aura ring generation three new sleek design with a 24 7 heart rate monitoring personalized health insights fella with sleep analysis and so much more adding three daily scores to your guide for you what better way to understand your sleep and realize your potential Seven temperature sensors to really understand your body temp, Oops. Sleeping, I mean, I don't know about you, but I like to sleep with my bed chilly. I like about 66 in there, fellas. 66, 66. yeah. See, so your body can get really in that good REM depending on the temperature. And you're able to uh, really adjust the way you sleep and find out your potential of sleeping from the Aura Ring by the temperature in your bed. So uh, Aura Ring is introducing with the new Generation 3 some sleep-guided sessions and more. Sleep analysis also. Readiness levels at their all time high when you get some good rest. How you feeling, buddy? My readiness levels is through the roof. I'm ready for Super Wednesday, up dog. I'm gonna super. I'm gonna blow it all off for Super Wednesday, but I'm ready, well rested. My aura ring says, let it eat. Aura ring combines advanced machine learning and health technology to help you focus less on tracking your day and more on just living your absolute best life, my man. So, aura ring, uh, get your holiday gifts. I mean, what better gift? Log on to www.auraring.com. Get the sizing kit sent to your house. Have you and your lady try it on. Stick one under the tree. What better gift than uh, helping someone with uh, guided sleep? It's a great right? gift for, you know, obviously Christmas coming up and then the new year. People are going to, you know, New Year's resolutions. This Aura Ring will help you monitor what you're putting in your body, your rest to get you healthier in 2022. The Aura Ring helps with that up dog. Mine's humming right now. I love it. Welcome back to a fresh new episode of Missing Curfew. I'm Shane O'Brien. And I'm Scotty Upshaw sitting next to Santa Claus over here, my friend. Ho, ho, ho. Look at this guy's beard. Merry Christmas, fellas, from Princey in Alberta. Fellas, this is the Christmas edition of Missing Curfew Up Dog. That's why we got these fucking sweaters on. This one is a little tight. I think it looks good. It's like Tommy Boy. Does, does this sweater make me look fat? No, your face does. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think Hall Pass, uh, they killed it with the Christmas sweaters and the Christmas party. I know. Al uh, throws a nice party. I wouldn't expect anything less from, from A Hall. Unfortunately, I couldn't uh, I couldn't make it because of the CDM Christmas walk. Um, it just took a lot out of me. I battled the head cold for Fuck, four eh? or five days. Yeah, I was done. The three day the three day walk uh, get you. It was Super Wednesday. It started Super Wednesday. And then I went right to CDM Christmas Walk. In the course of two weeks, I went out like, you know, I think five times. Jeez. It sounds like you kind of still got the cold. It's almost Christmas. Oh, no, I feel good. Okay. IVs, those things are game changers, man. I yeah, went into the hydration room. Shout out to hydration room. Fury. Cold and my, flu. Our boy, Brett. Unbelievable. What'd you get? Did you get the NAD drip? I got the cold and flu with a little extra uh, tortorol in there and some GABA, which is like, it's basically GABA, GABA. like, it's like the Xanax of it's fucking. guano. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you take it, and it, just, shit. it just relaxes you. So <laughs> okay, I felt great. I felt great. awesome, awesome. Chicago. But yeah, that's why we got these. That's why we got these sweaters on, baby. Chicago. Yeah. Um, how's your household looking? I mean, you've had your lights up since I think December first. But what else? Any new additions? Yeah, there? yeah. The reindeer showed up finally. Reindeer. Yeah. So I got Rudolph. I had to paint his. Uh, you paint his nose and his asshole <laughs> red, just so it it's his ass up. red too. <laughs> it is now. He's got a chafed ass from uh, from the Amazon shipment. I think the cardboard really got him. You know, he needs a little uh, a little lube, maybe a little chafe. What was that monkey butt we used to use at Bonnaroo? Yeah, yeah. He fashion. needs a little monkey butt. I still use that if it's a hot day at the golf course. I mean, could you imagine being Rudolph and fucking carrying old Santa around fucking yeah. all, all day on the twenty fourth? I mean, no, I he's can't. got a chafe little hoop. That guy. I watched the movie last night, Fred Claus, and you said before we got on here that you hadn't seen it uh, with Vince Vaughn. I don't know if I've seen it. It's about, I'll give you the little gist of it. Yeah. It's, he's, he's Santa Claus's brother. 
So he grows up jealous. He lives in Chicago. He's yeah. like, hates Christmas time. He needs 50 G's to open up a gambling, a legal gambling place right across from the Chicago uh, Stock Exchange. So he's okay. like, when the Stock Exchange is done, these guys will come over here, they'll gamble, but I need 50 G's. So his old man sends him up, or his brother says, I'll give you 50 G's, but come up. You got to work up in the North Pole. So up he goes, and uh, he goes yeah. to Fort Mac. He goes up he to goes, Fort Mac. He goes to Fort Mac. Freezes his balls off yeah. up there, and uh, you know you should watch. Happy it. ending. Yeah, happy not ending. not like you at the, <laughs> but, but happy ending. Woo! Awesome. Um, yeah, happy ending. It, it's good. You should watch it. It's not really a movie for Izzy. So when Izzy goes to bed, and you and Christina are having you know, some eggnog or whatever the fuck you're going to be drinking. No, speaking of Izzy. Yeah, what's up? With um, Izzy? We watched a couple Christmas movies. You did? Yeah, we we put on Frosty. She loves Frosty the Snowman. Like, I'm talking the original one. It's like from the 60s. Wow. Do you remember it? No. With like, uh, I, I don't know the bad guy, but like, they, it, it's kind of sad. It's crazy to actually watch old, old Christmas movies and the way like they speak to each other and... There's no like woke. Like you're talking like mir miracle on 34th Street. No, shit. yeah, but I'm just talking like even Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer back in the day, like that old one with the you know with the elves and stuff. It's just like <laughs> it's kind of ruthless with how the they elves and stuff. You, you know the cartoon, obviously. I do. Yes. Yeah. So just just tune in and go to like YouTube and watch these old films and just like they don't fluff anything up. Like it's kind of like just straight straight at it. Tell it how it is. Rudolph's badass. Um, you know, Frosty obviously got killed, but he comes back. Did like, he get killed? Frosty? Yeah. yeah they melt them. Oh, they that's right. Them. That's right. Right? They melt I, them. I, I haven't seen this, uh, this particular Christmas film. It, it, no, about. but, but it would, it would bring, I'll bring it back from when you were a kid. Should I fire it on when I get this? Yeah. Week just what? puff one down and watch it. I mean, Porter, I guess, watched Home Alone the other day with my parents and he was loving it. So that's encouraging. Maybe I'll fire on Home Alone 2 with him. See, even something like that. Like, you think Izzy would I, like that? Yeah, uh, not yet. Not yet. But I don't know if they're just making good quality movies like that, where it's like, you know, kind of badass and raw. Like, yeah. Well, they're not because have now. you ever checked out Netflix around this time of year? The movies they put on there are yeah, just shit. It? Yeah. Have you seen those Princey on Netflix? Up? You guys even have Netflix in Canada? Or what's going on? Yeah, we have Netflix. Again. <laughs> no, but they don't get a no. lot of the shows. No, my, I go home. My, niece, home. Is, my niece is all, they pirate my Netflix account. And now yeah. like when I go on there, there's these weird movies and I'm like, who's watching this? So now I, on, on my portfolio, you know, you have the different things and Up everyone dog. has flowers because he just stays at your house and watches his own Netflix. Right. Anyway, I go on there and it's me and then, you know, Emma, Grace, Avery. And then now I have Izzy's like baby one. But someone keeps watching mine, so I wrote, stop watching my shit on, that's my name, because it just screws up my algorithm, and all of a sudden, all the stuff that I want to watch is like did, fucking random, like Brokeback Mountain. Did you, broke back, <laughs> did you ever get pinched, like, when you, you know, back in the day when you're single days, when you're, you know, you flip it on, the girl's like, ah, uh, who's Jennifer? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I rented my house out, and uh, the girl's no, name must I have never been had it, for, since Netflix has been around. That's never happened to you. Since Netflix has been around, I never had a girlfriend. Oh, okay. Well, so I just maybe you, not you know girlfriend, me. maybe friend that you were hanging out with. No, no, anyways, no, you know me. Maybe it's just me, but I, a couple times I, I got pinched on the, hey, uh, who's Jennifer on your Netflix? You're like, I don't know. You don't, don't ask, baby. Yeah, <laughs> don't ask questions. You don't want the answers to. Princey, what, what's your go-to movies up there for Christmas time? I'm a, I'm a big Home Alone guy. I love that one. I love watching it every single year. It makes me laugh every single time. It's it's good. Like like Oppie, my my young boys, they're probably a little too young to watch that one. So my boys, they love uh, the newest Grinch movie that was on Netflix, the cartoon version. Uh, my wife got the recommendation from Kristen and little Bo. So my boys love the Grinch. With Jim Carrey? The no, Grinch that game. one's a little too scary for the boys. There's a new cartoon one that came out that was on Netflix and... Apparently, all the kids like it. Okay, I think my favorite movie, boys, is I need your opinion on this. Um, is the Santa Claus movies with Tim Allen? Are you guys fans of those or what? I love Tim Allen. Do you like the Santa Claus? All three of them? They're unbelievable. Love them. I like the one where Tool they, Man Tim. Where, where yeah. The Santa Claus 2. Where is that Tool Man Tim? Yeah, 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 yeah. Tool Man. Yeah. yeah. Tool Man Tim. Buzz Lightyear. Where they make the uh, clone of him, where they make the clone up in the workshop because he's got to go get married. And the guy just turns into a fucking prick Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> and then for me, boys, this is not for your totally kids. Totally backfired. This is not for your kids. Um, fucking Bad Santa. I'm going to watch Bad Santa at least once this fucking... With Billy Bob Thornton. Is yeah, that his he's name? a legend. I mean, that's not really a Christmas spirit movie, but... 
does Santa, Santa does what? He has a booze problem and he's just a just a greasy just, old perv. Yeah. yeah, him. Remember the um, he's angry too, isn't he? His little buddy. You can't. You gotta what? You, yeah, the little the little, little people. black guy. Yeah, the little black guy. He, little black guy. They're trying to steal something out of the safe. Mm -hmm. So obviously he got to dress up as Santa Claus, but he can't keep Billy Bob together. He's just getting pinned. He goes down there, watches like the young girls play it's volleyball. Like, <laughs> he's just like a creep, man. It's like get him to the Greek. There's no chance you can get him there. There's no chance. So those are my those are my go tos. And then obviously, what are your boys' thoughts on Christmas vacation? I mean, it's a fucking staple. Chappy Chase. Well, I mean, look at my house. I go full Griswolds you all are, the time. You are all the time. Pack that house. Let's go, baby. What's his name? Lloyd? No, not Lloyd Griswold. Lloyd. <laughs> What's no, his name? His name um, Clark Griswold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Clark go. Griswold. I, I like when. He's bringing the tree, and the neighbor goes, "Where are you gonna Where are you gonna put that tree?" He goes, "Bend over, and I'll show you." <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a classic. See, I'll watch that for sure. If I we didn't that. have a My party, if we didn't have that. that Christmas party to go to tonight, I'd probably watch that with you. Hey, hey oh, what's special up, special edition Santa Claus coming to town. Hey, Hall, you want to sit down, talk to the boys? What do you got? What do you got? What's your favorite Christmas movie? Ah, oh, we just talked about it. Right buddy. on cue, buddy. Right That's on what we were talking about. Right on vacation. But you should see a, so by the way, Al has a beautiful boat he keeps in my house. Uh, I came over last week and uh, he decked out the Duffy. And fuck, we got the lights all over at Santa. And I know, I was with you. A couple the, reindeers. Are they working now? Yeah, they're fucking working now. All right. Yeah. All right. He had to fix the fuse. What was the problem? The fuse. The fuse. Yeah, you put so much lights on there, you got to have a backup generator, but I was Clark Griswold, baby. Yeah, that was no, that was an Ashley job. We, we took it over to uh, Louis by the Bay the other night, and I was like, fire up the lights. And yeah, no, it was the fuse key. Didn't have enough fucking juice for it, did you, boys? Yeah, we needed a little, give him some Viagra. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I will say this about Christmas vacation, too, is my other favorite part is when he's out, when he's out cleaning the shitter, and he's just like, shitter's full. <laughs> <laughs> Underrated what? Four Christmases. I just watched that the other night. Four Christmases. Jesus, Obi. How many movies do you get to watch? I watched two Christmas <laughs> movies last night. It's my first two Christmas two movies. Two in a row? I watched two. I don't two. know the last time I've ever watched two movies I fell two asleep movies during four city. Christmases. Okay. I like the sweaters, boys. Yeah, Good yeah. Job. Thank Good you. Job. Sweaters are mint. That was a nice uh, gift for us by one of our, our partners. Surprise. Uh, kind of a cool setup. So we had a nice little party the other night, and uh, everybody broke those out. Yeah, that party looked amazing. Sorry, I missed it. It's all right, it's all right. I'm missing curfew. Good year, baby. Come on, baby. All right. Thanks, A-Hall. Um, up dog, another one. What's another favorite part of that Christmas? There's so many good lines in that movie. Um, you know me. I'm a terrible line movie guy. You are. I can just Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber is all I can do. Have you seen Four Christmases with A-Hall? <laughs> Which is said? why I've already threw it. Princey, have you seen Four Christmases with Vince Vaughn? I have, and my wife actually watched it on the plane ride home from Mexico two weeks ago. Oh, wow. I'm starting to realize I don't watch enough movies. Well, because you, you don't sit down. You gotta, to watch a movie, you got to sit down. Yeah, That's your I problem. Can't, I can't do that. All right, before we get into some World Junior, Updog, what is going on at your house for Christmas? To walk me through it. What's Is it at your house here in Newport, yeah. or what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. We're, uh, we're hosting the Hale family. My, Christina's um, parents are in town from Florida. We got Izzy Florida. at, a, That's at an live? age. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, they moved out to Florida last year. So, um, but good they red, often come back. Good they, red state. They're good family. Uh, real tight knit family. Four yeah, girls. Four, gr four, four girls. Four girls. Yeah, Duke Hale. He's wow. a legend. Four girls. <laughs> what did he do before he was married? Uh, <laughs> he um, four girls. Wow. He, uh, yeah, good guy. Indiana. Great guy. Loves I, met the him, I met him at your Thanksgiving. Two loves years the ago. Pacers. Loves the Hoosers. Big basketball guy. Legend. He's a funny guy. No, I, I hung out with him at your Thanksgiving two years ago. So, well, you know, it's me, him, and Matt because we're, you know, tight. You stay tight, eh? When there's so many girls, you got to yeah, have good three. camaraderie there's with the boys. Three, yeah. We get outnumbered. Yeah. Um, no, and then there's there's Wayne, too. Wayne's uh, Wayne's good guy. He's a guitar player. Sick one. Will he jam out at the Christmas? I got a couple of guitars there. And actually, one of my Christmas presents while I was at the Spangler Cup, Christina came over and watched me there. She brought me a guitar. Wow. So it was one of my better uh, better gifts, a little, a little Martin. It's pretty Sweet. juicy. Actually, it's a Taylor. I was way off. I don't know the difference. All I know is I would sometimes I'd go with Factor. You know, the, Charlie yeah, boy. I would go to Factor. Factor would hit every guitar shop and on the road. Like that was his of thing when we land. So I would go the odd time with him and he would show, hey, this is a sick guitar. I'm like, I don't fucking know. So, let's, so let's so go. He, I'd be like, let's go hit happy. Let's go hit happy hour. I don't care about the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the guitar. Fuck the guitar factor. Let's go hit happy hour. So we're uh we're gonna do the dinner at the house and um you know, boxing day is a big day. World Huge juniors day. World Junior starts. I can't wait. And uh 
And then the 27th, Obes, we're going to go up to Aspen and spend uh, spend some time there with uh, with you. I'll see you there. I get in there on the 28th. 28th? Yeah. Awesome. I'll see you on the chair left on the 29th. Fuck the gondola. Yeah, let's go. Should we get in the same gondola? I'll, I'll take the gondola with you for yeah, sure. Let's get up there. Maybe hotbox it. Bring a little flask. I'm going to have a little flask in my... Uh, yeah, we can bring the weed pen. Yeah. I'm going to have a little flask in my... Uh, I think it's nice. Uh, I think it'll be a nice time. Shout out to... Uh, uh, Mike Carabini, Beanie's dad. Last year I went skiing with him in Vail and he made me an old fashioned on the gondola. Come on. An old fashioned. He made the, it? He had it he in had his- He had the bitters and the he fucking- had, uh, fucking everything. The bitters. <laughs> he had it in his- Buddy, I swear to God. He had it in his fanny Where pack. Where did he get the ice from? I think he just took some snow maybe off the run, yeah. and off the skis and put it in there. I was like, throw some snow in there. I don't care. Maybe he had ice too, but he had this fanny pack, like Fuck. a big fanny pack and I was- I was just about to kind of let him have it a little bit, eh? About like, hey, hey nice fanny pack. How did you but. not marry this girl? They're, all, they're old man's making you old fashions on the uh, fucking fuck chair. It, she had enough of me, I guess. Hey, anyway, so he pulls it out. <laughs> he's got the old, fa- he's got the old faction, old fashioned mix with the with the orange and the bitters. And I'm on the chairlift. I'm like, that's next God. level. So I'm not gonna go Michael Carabini on you, yeah. but I will bring some. Some good old fashioned yeah, totally. Jameson for you. Even if you don't marry her, you should still stay buddies with him. Who's talking? Who's getting married? What's all this married does? This time <laughs> of year got you all fucking sentimental over there. No, no. I this just, is missing curfew. There's I've no marriage a, talk. I'm missing curfew. I've never I've had a, a potential father in law make me drinks on the chairlift. It's pretty awesome. Well, listen, it wasn't the family loved me. <laughs> <laughs> I think the family loved me. I, I, it was the beanie, I think. Ah, uh, buddy, that, what's there not to love? I think it was the what's beanie. What's there not to I love? I think it was Mr. the beanie. That, so, and my care beanie, shout out to you, buddy. Princey, what's going on up there besides you won't be able to watch any flames? What's going on in the yeah. Prince household? Well, it's a it's a busy year this year because last year, that this time last year, we we had to stay in our houses. We didn't get Christmas. So my little boy missed out. So we've got to hit That's two sad. families. My yeah. My I spent last Christmas uh doing missing curfew stuff. But um uh, boy, always my working. wife <laughs> always and I I probably will still do missing curfew stuff on Christmas this we year. We need to get you a couple I, elves to help you out. <laughs> We can't be having you. We should dress you up like we, Santa listen, Claus. We'll though. give you we'll give you Christmas morning off. Other than that, stay, stay okay. at it. All right. Okay. <laughs> <That's good. Yeah. laughs> um, my wife's family lives up in Medicine Hat. You know, Medicine Hat Tigers, Joffrey, Lupus. the Smarty we're Box, head, the old yeah, Smarty Box. We're, we're gonna head up to Medicine Hat and see the family there. And then my dad and uh, my mom they live out in a town just outside of Calgary called Strathmore. So we're gonna hit Strathmore on the way back. My dad loves World Junior, so I know we're going to be able to sit down and watch that. I'll see my brother, my sister. So it, it's going to be a good time making up for lost time from last year. That's for sure. Can we guarantee a Canada in the finals? Because I might just book this trip. Yeah. Well, we need we need to get a – yeah. I think they'll be in the finals. Are we right? getting a bird? Who's in their division? It was – the only teams in there were – I Finland. think they're in with Finland. That could be the only team that could maybe yeah. disrupt. That'll be a question for our guest today, Yeah, our, our, our big-time guest. Um, I'm looking forward to hanging out with my nephews. I'm going to take Porter skating. He's been, he's been learning. He's been getting better. I'm going to take him in there, maybe rub him out in the corner. And then, yeah, I'm going to drink Crown Royal. I'm going to teach him how to be a meathead I'm already. I'm going to drink yeah. Crown Royal and watch the World Juniors on Boxing Day. I can't wait. I'm going to drink a big old two-sixer of it. Really? Where you just take the lid off and you just... <laughs> and the lid, you don't even care about the lid up, dog. You just keep her humming. And then my mom just keeps looking at me like, are you going to drink that whole bottle, Shane? Yeah, I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. Mom. So is that the play for just on the twenty sixth, or will you twenty fourth? Will you go crowning all? all I'll week? go twenty fourth Christmas Eve night crown. Yeah, and my parents go to bed early now. They're a little bit older, so I'm going to stay at their house that night. So, so I'll be up funny. by myself. You it's, know, it's it's something. I, all my buddies drink Crown Royal. I only drink it when I go home for Christmas. Yeah, and in the summer. And I know why. I, <laughs> <laughs> and I know why because it's so fucking good. And like, do you put like any? Uh, you know, you don't I put eggnog put, in there or no, anything I put like that ice in the morning. With a splash of Diet Coke. <laughs> <laughs> and Crown I mean and Coke. Hey, for you Americans down there, if you ever go up to Canada, Port Hope in the middle of winter, you drink fucking Crown and Cokes. You drink Crown and Cokes. Or maybe a Crown and Gingy. But that's more of a summer drink, Crown and Gingy. Maybe the- I should send you up with some of the uh, Silver Ave rum. What do you think? <laughs> I'll drink it. I'll, yeah, oh, let's yeah. see how that goes. Is, well, that maybe, your, is that your rum company? That's our rum company, yeah. Well, oh. you know, we invested in it, but Silver A Rum. How are you? How come it's not the official rum of missing curfew? Well, now that you're drinking and telling everyone you're a rum and coke guy, I mean fuck Crown and Coke. Well, yeah, but but I but you know, you what know I mean. what? Oh, it's whiskey. <clears throat> no, it's, not it's, rum. it's whiskey, but I'll tell you I used to drink rum. My first drink when I was drinking in like, you know, junior hockey, I was a rum guy. And yeah. 
Uh, my boy Steve Cramp's house one night. I drank a little bit too much white rum. It was around this time of year. I came back from junior hockey. Mm-hmm. You know how you get a break in the dub in the OHL? You get like a week off. Come home, I get fucking just hammered on Bacardi white rum. <laughs> and I'm out front puking in his fucking parents' yeah. bush. And from that day on, uh, I wasn't really a rum See, guy. See, Silver A won't get you... Uh won't get you puking. Not even it's if you fine. drink the whole bottle or what? No, and we got a white rum too. We got coconut, wow. chocolate, and a reserve. The reserve was like tequila though. It's I, I didn't nice even know you oaky, had a rum. It's got a nice know. oaky taste. I didn't even know you had a I mean, I don't own it, but, but I, you got fire, I fired a couple Benjis at it. That's get nice. it off the ground. Yeah, yeah. Well, boys, I hope you have a great Christmas. Um, Princey, we love all your hard work here. Up dog, you're the man. Let's talk World Juniors. We got another great guest. Last week, last week we had Craig Button, who's a beauty. Now you got the fucking voice of the World Juniors coming. We do. Up, yeah, dog. We, we got do. Gord Miller coming up next. But obviously, up you played in it. I will say, when I think of World Juniors, obviously growing up as a kid, it's one thing. But the one World Juniors I remember, and it's when you played. It was when Toots was, and I want to ask Gord about this, but he was up in the booth, you know, calling this game when he the Swedes came out for the first game. And fucking the old two two train, and the look on these Swedish kids' faces was like, I mean, the shit was running down the leg. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Get me back to the fucking Swedish elite league here. That for me, when I think of World Juniors, besides back in the day, right, with maybe Lynn Dross and those guys, but that's the one time where I, I was watching it playing junior hockey. I'm like, these Swedish kids want no part of this game. I tell you, uh, Toots that year had, um, he had kind of it all. He was scoring goals in in. Um, in Brandon. So he came on our team. He was almost leading the dub in goals. He had 40 something goals that year. Uh, but what he brought was, um, you know, a sense of, you know, he brought like Canada together through this crazy insanity, like style of play. And I don't think there's ever been a Canadian ever to play like that ever again. Like Fanuf was probably another guy that, that would just murder guys, but toots, you know, forget that there was a puck on the ice for that tournament. He His job was to go out, create energy, and he had the building in Halifax absolutely rocking every time. He had the whole country rocking. Yeah, he did. And he I, did. I didn't really know who Jordan Tutu was because I was in the OHL and he was playing in Brandon. So I remember looking at your guy's squad or whatever, and, and they're like, this Tutu guy plays a physical game. And I flipped the fucking first period on. I'm like, well, that's an understatement. This, like, I was like, I'm going to have to play against this guy yeah. in the American League. And Toots in the American League, too, was, I mean. Toots was one. just a – Toots and Pee Wee. Um, I, I can't wait to have Toots on this podcast. Yeah, we want. I want Toots in studio though. No, I, I, I he, that's kind of been the agreement. Yeah. He's, um, he still hasn't been in the U.S. in you know two I years know. now. Um, but we got to get him on. But anyway, he, uh, he had this fucking, he had this energy buddy that was going crazy. He had all his family in the crowd. They were running up and down the aisles with with the Nunavut flags. Um, he had a big, big group of people from, from Rankin Inlet and, uh, it, you know, something I'll always remember is, is just Yoni Pitkinen, who still <laughs> to this day can't, you hear Jordan Tutu's name. He runs out of the building. Yeah. Uh, my tummy's sore. My tummy's sore. Like this like, is in the NHL. You wouldn't play against him. Never. Wow. No, I played play with him in Philly for the half a year and, and we played, we were playing Nashville and he's like, he didn't come to the rink. He just said, nope, I'm not coming. My my tu- my tummy my tummy. Oh, no, Toots, buddy, he, he was scary to play against yeah. early in his career when he just was running around and he was scary, especially as a defenseman because you're like, fuck, I got to go back and get pucks all night against this guy. Like, yeah, it's dangerous. So we just had such a good group. We had like, I got your team here. Yeah, I know, I know, but you know, the year before, um, you know, Carla Koyakovo, Pierre Marc Bouchard, myself. I gotta ask you. I gotta ask you this about this guy. When when you first met this guy. And I think you were the captain in 2003, right? I was the captain, yeah. What did you think of Pierre Alexander Pronto when you first met? <laughs> <laughs> Buddy, he couldn't speak a lick English. He couldn't speak English when he came to... So so him and Bouchard, him and Pierre-Marc Bouchard were like super tight. Played on the same line. They, I think they even played on the same team. But he was this guy, like all of a sudden could come out of nowhere and he was scoring goals and... Guys are like this. This kid from the queue is going to make our team. Like he's a sniper. He was using a wooden stick. Wasn't he was. He? And we all use fucking. Wood. Oh yeah, well, we, we were. Yeah, we were. No, use most wood. of us used uh, blades. Like we, we would have the shaft, the with, shaft the blade. with the blade. Yeah, yeah. S- mo- some of us, yeah. like Pierre Marc Bouchard and PA, both used wooden. St- I just remember twiggies. them having wood. Sw- yeah. Kyle Wellwood, wooden twig. Um, How Toots, good was Wellie? Toots, I think, had a wooden twig. It was. It was fucking wooden twig days. Well, Welly was so good. Like I played against Welly when he was in Belleville, and you you look at him and he, you know, he's the same way in the NHL. Like, but couldn't skate. wasn't 
not in great shape, but like you couldn't hit him. He was smart in every one. Like in Belva on the big ice, like you couldn't touch him. Hey, suspect wasn't in good shape, but he was in good shape. Yeah. Like he didn't, he no, had, I know. That's he what had I mean. the baby fat still and a little belly. Like he had a beer belly. Yeah. But he could, his VO2s were out of the char- off the charts at our draft, off the charts. And the guy could skate and skate and skate. And, and no, he wasn't a great skater, but look at the career he had. Buddy, he Made was, plays. His stick was the size of this pen. Yeah, he was one of our best players my two years in Vancouver in the playoffs. Um, but poor Welly. So he gets one. They take him out of Toronto. He goes to Vancouver. And then I guess somebody from Vancouver or somebody from Toronto, whatever. Welly was laying by his pool. And they snapped a picture of oh, him. Yeah. And his fucking barrel was hanging out. And they put on the cover of the Vancouver side. <laughs> yeah, it was free agency too, I think, right? <laughs> yeah, they just signed him or yeah. something. And I was like, but like you said, he was in shape. He just didn't have he the has, physical frame. But one of the smartest... Hockey players, um, fearless. Like he would go in the corners and not get hit, and yeah. he was great for us in the playoffs. And he was good in that tournament for you guys. I, I had uh, I had one of a, I had a great phantom apple. I think I chipped it out of the zone, and I'm watching Welly from behind now take a guy wide. He's a righty. He takes him down the left wing wall, and he comes to the net. He gets tripped, and he pulls it to his forehand and just roofs it. It was probably yeah, yeah. Our, it was probably our highlight of World That's Juniors the goal. that year. That's the goal I'm talking about. Yeah, it was. I, I mean. This is just the shit he could do. He pull it off, and he was a big reason why our team was so good. He was a, he was a great player. Derek Roy, I think he's still Roy playing. Roy, is he still playing? Roy, is he still playing? Fuck, I think Roy's he's still playing. Ian White, Ian White was a legend. Stage beauty. Jeff Ian White Wo- almost missed. Jeff the, Ian White almost missed the final game. Eh? What happened? Almost slept in. <laughs> I had adjoining rooms to him, and I was I was literally going to the rink, and he was still sleeping. And I'm like, buddy, and I, I wasn't going super early, but I'm like, bro, you got to get, got to get up. Like we got a fucking game. It's actually the finals. And, uh, it's the gold medal game. Yeah, Whitey, here, let's go, up, buddy. You know, two o'clock game. I'm like, fuck, it's time to get up. <laughs> what do you do the night before? Or just, he's just a good sleeper. He, you know, he liked to go down. He's a good, he's a good sleeper. It can happen. I mean, Joel Ward, I love Ward, one of my favorite teammates. He, before game six in the second round against Vancouver, we're like in the meeting. We're like, where's Wardo? He was still just shutting her down. Like, so it can happen, right? Like, it wasn't like he was out the night before or anything. Jeff Woywicka, shout out to Woywicka, Woisey. He, how, uh, how good years, Alberta boy. How many years did he play in the show? Did he play? Yeah, he played a couple. Let's talk. But uh, he scored one of our biggest goals for our team that year against the Americans. And it was in the semis or the quarters, I think. It was a tie game till late, and we're going to get Princey to pull that up too. Um, but yep. he scored a huge, huge goal for us. And, uh, you know, moments like that in, in tournaments, short tournaments are huge. So, why Yeah, he- you said that last week to, to Craig, and it's true about, like, had such a short tournament and having to get your guys going and scoring big goals. You made, make sure everyone feels good. You played 278 National League games. Yeah. For who? Chi-Town? Who else? You played for... Um, St. Louis, I think. Played for the St. Louis Blues. Yeah. Played for the Edmonton Roadrunners. Did he not play in Chicago? Played for know. Dallas. And he had a cup of coffee with the Rangers. Ah. He's coaching in the AJHL right now. For who? Sherwood Park. No shit. The and Sherwood Park it, Crusaders. Are they still called yeah. the Crusaders? Wow. Yeah. By the way, Fort McMurray's uh, having a year. My brother said they're they're leading their division. Yeah, they are. I follow the AJHL quite well. My brother pl- my brother played for the Oil Barons too, Uppy. Come on. Yep. I didn't yeah, even know you had a brother. Barons. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what's we'll your brother's inside. name? Brett. His name's Brett, and you know what a funny thing up he is? He played with Colton Pareko on the Oil Barons. So you got a brother named Brett. I got a brother named Brent. Brent. And yeah. they both played for the fucking Oil Barons. It's yeah, awesome. and my, bro- my brother recently told me that um, he knows he knew your niece, Emma. Um, one of, uh, I think, Emma's mother billeted someone. Fucking so my family brother tree to, here today. My Shannon. brother used to go over. <laughs> Shannon See, billeted yeah. Colton Pareko. <laughs> Fuck, yeah, so, yeah, you, for everything. Your cousin <laughs> dated my cousin who dated your third hey, cousin who dated my family, ninth cousin. The old family tree looks like a wreath up there, fella. <laughs> it looks like a yeah. Christmas hey, wreath. Hey, listen, I get it's cold up there. You got to do what you got to do. <laughs> um, yeah, no, Emma is, uh, she's my little niece. She's the hockey player. She's she the loves sniping. hockey, right? Yeah, she's. I just got a video of her on the outdoor rink that my brother built. All the girls, she's doing one-timers. What an outdoor rink. Nice. I saw, you showed me a video of Big Scott out there. With oh, the yeah. The hose. Yeah. Did you have that when you were growing up? Did they? Did... Uh, buddy, my dad made me a rink in my first house, and I was skating on it when I was like two, which is why wow. I'm getting Izzy some skates for Christmas, yeah, yeah, but yeah. don't tell her. I'm texting her right now. Okay. Is he? <laughs> so um, she's getting a first pair of wheels. Guess who hooked me up? Frosty. Frosty. 
Shout out Frosty the Snowman. Frosty, Frosty the, the Beauty. Um, what was your favorite Christmas gift growing up as a kid? What hockey did you always net. hockey net? Okay. Come down, it wasn't wrapped. I see it there, and then Fuck, I just start ripping, ripping pucks in it. Yeah. Right? Mine was uh, always hockey gloves. Always wanted the new gloves. Cooper Technoflex gloves that they used to wear in the OHL. I wanted those. Always wanted gloves. Buddy, I got, I still have them. A pair of my first ever hockey gloves are Oilers gloves. And there's a picture of me like holding, like I got the Jofa helmet. Are you in a white jersey or something? No, I'm in a blue Oilers jersey. Oh, you and are? And I okay. got the fucking like long Titan yeah. Oiler gloves on. I've seen With that like picture. a Titan stick. Legendary pick. You still have that. Actually, when I went to trial for the Oilers, the day I signed the PTO, I put that picture out there as in like always wanted to try it, like always, obviously want to play for him. Legendary photo. Yeah. Jeff Wawicka, back to him. What a junior career. Look at these numbers. 37 points, 109 pims one year. I like Tough. that. He's a farm boy, I like bud. that. From Drayton Valley. I wonder if he played He's the least Drayton amount Valley, of games yeah. on your whole squad. I, think, I bet you he did. How many Eminger play? No, Eminger. no, no. No? We're missing actually some guys on this team. These are all the NHLers that have played. So so there was some guys on your team that didn't play in the show. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's only 17. These are all the NHLers that These played. These are just yeah. the NHL guys. See, Eminger played 488 games. Wow, that's a lot of games. Eminger? Still works for the Rangers. 488 Great guy. games. Great guy. Emmy's an f- absolute beauty. Um, Daniel Paye. Stanley Cup champ. Yeah. Great career. Flurry, Hall of Famer. Gregory Campbell. Lupel, off ice Hall of Famer. Gregory Campbell would always ask me to fight. <laughs> would he? And I'm like, Soupy, you sure? Yeah. Like, I, 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 love, I respect him. You already him. made the NHL. So I'm like, you, you know how this goes. Stanley Cup like, champ. We fought two or three times. I'm way bigger than you, but he wanted to go. So he made a great career for himself. But I just, I, I, you, you talk about changing roles. He had to change his role into a guy that was willing to fight and willing to. You know, kill penalties. So I give him all the credit in the world, actually, Gregory Campbell. I uh, I got a story. Let's hear it. Gregory Campbell wrote a letter to um, the head of Canadian hockey at the time, how bad he wanted to try out for our team. Is that all it took was a letter? He wrote a letter. Fuck, I should have wrote a letter. I mean, maybe if you fucking, you know, got the, got the iPad out. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a hand. There would have been some grammar. Listen, he wrote mistakes. a handwritten letter to Hockey Canada and said how much of an honor it would be if he could play for the World Junior Team. And then he got the invite. How's that? I, I, I know. I think it's a little bit of a ball lick move, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. No, it's no I disrespect, Soupy. Soupy I love Soupy, but that's, uh, that's completely out there. You want my that's, God truth? It yeah, seems that's, like- that's a for sure thing. Now, he was a big player for us. Good team. for him. He I, jumped in. He scored some goals. He was a great two way no, centerman, great, shutdown guy great for us. Great player in general. Great yeah. career. Great guy. Now, listen, if I would have known, if it would have taken a letter for me, I would have wrote the letter. Fucking so right. I can't really chirp him, but. No, no, it's not, not worth chirping, but this is, you know. So he guy. was obviously on the radar before, right? Mm-hmm. Right? He was a good player. Where did he play? Kitsch? Play he Kitch. did. He did. So maybe the but letter. But he wasn't on the radar like in the summer or anything. No. No. Did they take you guys into a summer camp? Yeah, they did. We went to Halifax uh, in the summer. Okay. You know who else wasn't at that camp was Joffrey Lupel. He was getting pinned at the lake. Eh? No, he was hurt. Remember oh. his first uh, Anaheim, he hurt his back. Remember, Do I remember ever? they sent him back home, like kind of with a back kind of injury. They did some x-rays, I think. He missed our whole summer oh, camp. Oh, actually, you know what? I, no, I didn't that know was that. In I, his didn't, very, I didn't know Lupel. After his draft, his first camp in, in his first summer camp, um, he ended up like having some, maybe a bad back, sore back, and they did x-rays, and then they sent him back home, and he actually didn't play till like September, October. So it started back then for him? Yeah. Wow. I never and, then, um, and then he absolutely went fire. Um, I mean, he was obviously a sick, sick player. He drafted seventh overall, but that, that year he was just sniping, and they were like, he's going to be one of our best you know, starting right wingers. Yeah, your team was – I mean, that whole Halifax tournament was fun to watch. What do you think about – well, Princey, what was your favorite World Junior moment, buddy? What, what, what jumps out at you? Mine for sure is that stack team in 2005 when you guys had the lockout. So basically all those first-round NHL picks got put on Team Canada. Like you're talking Seabrook, Phaneuf, like Coburn, Carter, Crosby, Richards, like Getzlaff. It goes down there. So – I was I was 14 years old at the time, so watching that, that's who you guys wanted to be. That's you know you're playing bantam hockey or whatever. That's who you wanted to be. It was a it was a really really cool thing to watch. I mean, obviously I don't want another lockdown to see that happen again. Um, something that was really cool that 
happened after um, the World Junior Tournament that time was I was living in Red Deer at the time, so we would go to a lot of Red Deer Rebels games. And the first game back after World Juniors was Red Deer Rebels versus the Calgary Hitmen. So opening draw, you've got Fanuf and Colin Fraser from Red Deer, and then you've got Ladd and Getzlaff. And they fought, all four of them fought off the opening face-off <laughs> after the World Junior Tournament. It was Getzlaff and Fraser and Fanuf and Ladd. So they obviously had planned that out. It's great. That's unreal. Good story. Love that. Hey, I'll there's, be there's no video of it. I can't find it. Who the fuck is Jeff Glass on this 2005 team? Who's that? Jeff Glass? Tough. Yeah, Played goalie. in Vancouver. What? Oh, no. He's the that's, goalie. Jeff Glass that's the goalie. That's, oh, uh, Tanner Glass. That's yeah, Tanner. he's a beauty. Jeff Glass was a goalie from... Um, yeah. He, no, he was from Kootenai, and he was legit. Yeah. Like, legit, legit. You know who else was fucking legit, unfortunately, and had a short career due to an injury? Dan Blackburn. Yeah. He I was a world junior Coot goalie Coot before... Kootenai Ice, right? He was so nasty. Yeah. He was like a... Was he a first overall pick? He was the first rounder of the Rangers. I don't yeah. know if he was a first overall, but he, he wasn't was a high first overall. He was high, high, first high, round of the high, Rangers. High. Yeah, Oppie, how do you think before we get to our guest? I always wait. How do you think your 2003 team would have done against a 2005 team? 2005 is not, they say yeah. the best team ever. Ever, yeah. Um, yeah, it would have been a good game. It would have been a good game. I think you guys got a little more toughness than they do. We would have. Uh, we would have had a fucking blast having beers after. I tell you that. I would have been a hell of a shaker. <sighs> that would have been. Mean, a good they game got to some. Watch. They got some absolute studs. On that was team. a wagon team. We got to ask Gord about that team when he comes on. Boys, love you. Merry Christmas. Coming at you next, Gord Miller. Up dog. DraftKings, baby. Christmas is here. It's the season of giving, you know? And these people at DraftKings, they love to fucking shell out the cash if you know what you're betting. Jingle bell, jingle bell. <laughs> got the jingle bells right here. You do. Oops. That's a big old jingle bell. Yeah, well, it is that time. Hopefully Santa's bringing a big bag of cash for us and for our listeners. Because this is the season, football fans. DraftKings, your official daily fantasy partner of the NFL, is giving you the shot to stuff your stockings, stuff your stockings, not your stockings, with big cash prizes. This Christmas week, new customers can play free for millions with their first deposit. This gift sure beats the tube socks and underwear we all remember unwrapping as a kid. Up dog, when Canada wins the World Juniors, we will stuff our sockings with cash from DraftKings, baby. Playing daily fantasy football is simple. Just pick your lineup of NFL stars while staying under the salary cap and score enough points to bring home cash. And with the free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes, taking in the NFL action this week will certainly be jolly. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable. And best of all, you can just deposit and withdraw your cash whenever you want. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code CURFEWKINGS to play free for millions. That's right. Enter promo code CURFEWKINGS, baby, to get a free shot at millions in total prizes with your first deposit. Don't miss out on this Christmas treat. Download DraftKings and play the official daily fantasy partner of the NFL. Minimum $5 deposit required. Eligible restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Ho, ho, ho. Ho, ho, ho. Santa's coming down the motherfucking chimney, O'Brien. <laughs> the holidays came early here at Manscaped, the leading men's hygiene brand. Hygiene brand. Manscaped just launched new products, including their all-new ultra-premium body wash. Obes, that's fucking so you don't smell oh, I, stinky. I got the body the wash. I got it. You it's do? good. I, I, the it's little, good. How about the nozzles on the top? Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So, and two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. Which I also, you know, if you're lazy and you don't want to shampoo and then condition, Manscaped's if got you covered. If you're in a hurry. It's time to give yourself or someone who needs it the gift of beautiful skin, hair, and balls this holiday season. Because, <laughs> I mean, why, why don't you want to have a beautiful set of balls hanging on the Christmas tree or hanging between your legs? <laughs> Go to manscaped.com and use code CURFEW for 20% off and free shipping, fella. Jingle balls to the walls, fellas. Listen up. Dingle, untrimmed, dingle, prune, dingle. untrimmed pubes are a thing of the past, and it's possible you have Santa's beard in your pants. It's time to leave your significant other some cookies and milk at the bottom of your chimney, and I'm talking about the Manscaped Perform Package 4.0. Oh, I dog. don't know if I'd go next to those fucking milk and cookies <laughs> if, if that was yours, I'd tell you. But it's also waterproof, so you can use it in the shower. It's like a gift to give your partner with just less mess. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 also includes a crop preserver and a crop reviver, an anti-chafing ball, chafing ball deodorant. I know you like that, Obes. Moisturizing and toner because it's time 
time to keep your North Pole feeling smelling fresh. I mean, the ball deodorant and the toner is unbelievable. I got it right there. Every time I get out of the shower, I get her going. So get 20% off and free shipping with the code CURFEW at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use the code CURFEW. Clean up your nuts and make Santa proud this year, up dog. Santa's coming down that chimney with a clean set of balls. Welcome back to Mr. Curfew. Up dog. Last week we had Craig Button breaking down the depth, the teams, and now you pulled out another legend, world junior legend, the voice of the world juniors. Yeah, you're starting to hear him a lot now because, uh, you know, coast to coast, Toronto Maple Leafs, Edmonton Oilers, uh, a lot of stars up there right now. So you get this guy's voice uh, every so often. Every, every boxing day I hear uh, it. We every don't boxing get it. Day. You know, now that we got this ESPN Plus down here, we get to we get to watch all the, the games up north. So and I like, you, get, you get World Juniors on the NHL Network yeah. too. So I've been listening to this guy for years. Well, without further ado, a guy that I've known since I was a kid. And, uh, you know, he actually announced my draft in Toronto, and we're going to get to that. But uh, Mr. Gord Miller, pleasure to have you on Missing Curfew. Merry Christmas, and how are you? Very well. Merry Christmas to you two guys. You're you're looking very festive. I'm, I'm, I'm I wish I'd uh, I had to I had to make some cuts when I was packing. I had to cull the herd a bit, so I wasn't able to bring my ugly Christmas sweater. I wasn't <laughs> yeah. Ugly Christmas sweaters. Yeah, um, they, I wasn't able to bring mine. Well, we were, we would give you the heads up, but we we know you're a pro. We know you're traveling. I think you're probably on the road for the better part of a month now. So you know we don't we don't need you to fill up your suitcase with any ugly Christmas sweaters. So we'll leave that to the professionals down here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah, Goro, you were telling us before we got on 32 days on the road. Um, yeah. Up dog, I don't know if I could handle that even in my prime. How is that for like you? Obviously, got to take care of yourself and and stuff like that. Well, that's a long time to be out there. Yeah, the hardest thing is to pack for a trip that, where you go Edmonton, Calgary. Red Deer, Vancouver, Vegas, Arizona. There's not a lot of <laughs> You kind of have to Don't you should just keep a My winter coat's going to come in handy in Vegas. Yeah, you just throw a pair of trunks in the very bottom of the suitcase for for Vegas and Phoenix. Hey, just a pair of trunks. Hey, you haven't figured it yeah, you haven't bought a place down in Phoenix yet? A little uh, a little uh, you know, vacation home. Jeez, you just just keep some, some only, gear down there. I'm the only guy from Western Canada that doesn't have a place in uh, in Arizona. No, I I don't. So I I, I have enough trouble with one home. I don't. Yeah. I can't handle two. <laughs> where, where is home for you now in the off season, Gordo? Where do you spend your summers? Or Toronto. I'm Toronto. in Toronto. So okay. I've, I've lived there for 31 years. I, I'm in Edmonton doing this now. I, I grew up here and worked here. I covered the Oilers in the 80s, but um, I've been in Toronto since 1990. Okay, whereabouts? I, I grew up in Port Hope, so I'm kind of familiar with the city. Where are you? Right in the city? My, or daughter, my daughter goes to school in Port Hope. Um, Trinity oh, College. But, uh, yeah. Wow. And, she's um, a yeah. Smart so, one. So uh, I live. I live Midtown in Toronto. Okay, cool. Sort of, yeah. Gordon, my address? You, are you going to get my address out here, Obi? Like, like, what are we doing here? No, 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 no. I, I just never remember the city. I might stop by for a drink. So now that now that I can yeah. track you down. So I know where you are. Uh, we'll send him. We'll send him a package. Yeah, yeah. curfew package. I'll yeah. get your address. Gordon, did you ever think back in the '80s, you're covering the Oilers? Uh, I, that's when I first started watching the Oilers and loved them. Born in the '80s, uh, that you would be the voice of Christmas time for Canadians <laughs> coast to coast. Uh, a time of year that. Um, we all look forward to, even as Shane and I grow older and we're still living down in the U S and California, we, we love this time of year, love listening to you, but, um, you know, how did you get into the world juniors and, and how, you know, how special is it this time of year for you? You know, it's really something I, and I, you know, I, when I worked at, in Edmonton, I worked at CBC and, and they used to cover the tournament, but they only showed a couple of games and then TSN took it over in 1991 and I just started there and, and you could see it start to take off, you know, and then. In 1990, so I hosted it uh, from the studio a couple of times, and then I was the on-site host from 95 to 2001, and you could just see how it was coming. And uh, when they made me the play-by-play announcer, I, I, I think I was just, you know, you're so focused on the moment. And, and the one thing about the World Junior is, you know, if, if I was down, you know, in, in Newport Beach and I got a call, hey, Gord, you got to call a Ducks-Kings game in an hour, I could do it. It wouldn't be great. But I could do it. I know enough. I know the players. You, you could do it. You can't do that with this tournament because you don't know the players. So the amount of prep you have to do to, to not just, you know, know their numbers, but recognize them by the way they skate, who they are, get the stories. That's the that's the hard part of it. And that's the, that's the fun and challenging part of it. And one of the great things about it is that, you know, there's so 
there's so much turnover from year to year. You only get usually three or four returning players, but it's all new players every year. So it's like this fresh canvas every every tournament. Gordo, you you bring up the the other countries and stuff. And when I watch you guys do your you know do your thing every Christmas, and now that me and up here in the business, I, I butcher normal North American Canadian names. <laughs> Are you ever nervous when you look at the Finnish squad or the Russian squad? You're like, how am I going to pronounce this guy's name? Or, or what's the secret to that? Well, you know, people ask me that all the time. Like, how do you get all those names right? I, I always say, you don't know those players. How do you know I'm right? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the one thing is once you've done it for a while and you learn the kind of linguistic differences, um, it gets easier. So, so Russian names, for the most part, the accent is on the middle syllable. Which is interesting because if he'd come over, if he'd come over twenty years later, Sergei Fedorov would have been Sergei Fedorov. That's how you say his name in Russian. And I think we're moving more towards the way the players say their names at home. So, for example, um, member from Anaheim, Andre Kasha. Well, he's Andre Kasha in Toronto because in, in Czech you say Andre. And so I think we're moving towards that. I'm comfortable saying people's names any way they like. To be honest, the one that. What bugs me is when they change it because then I double clutch trying to think, is, is it this or is it that? But, but for the most part, and I, I told Ray Ferraro when he started, here's the thing. It doesn't matter if we get a name wrong as long as we do it the same way. Yeah, totally. but, we obviously, <laughs> but we obviously try as best we can to get it right. And, and it's, an, you know, language changes and there's, it evolves and, um, and we've evolved along with it. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I hate when guys, you know, take their their wife's name and change their name midway through their career. That's that's <laughs> terrible. <laughs> uh, just kidding. Um, I, I look back at my World Junior experience and just how tight, like especially when you go over to Europe and and you mm-hmm. have these special moments in tournaments in Canada. Uh, how special is it for you to integrate with these teams? You know, you always travel as part of Team Canada usually. And you meet all the families and you get to integrate into this like special Christmas weekend with the, um, you know, with the families. What, what stands out about that experience year after year after year, uh, meeting the dads and the moms and the brothers yeah. and, and how special that well, is? The sad part is, you know, we haven't the last couple of years, right? Because of, you know, last year it was in a bubble, no fans. Um, you know, we didn't get to talk to the players except by Zoom which isn't the same. So I miss that. Yeah. I mean, sure. Like, you know, I'm, you know, I remember meeting your parents, you know, like yeah. it's, 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 um, I, I think that's part of the great, you know, when you're away every Christmas, there's this sort of community of people. And the amazing thing now is so many Canadians go when it's in Europe, like 3000 Canadians, I think went to the Czech Republic in 2020 when it was there. So, yeah, I think that's the, that's the neat part of it. And um, it's um, I, I think just, you know, getting to know players before they play in the NHL and seeing them at this level is different. And certainly, like you know, like when I see Jason Spezza, who played, you know, with you in, in the O2 tournament, you know, even now, 20 years later, we still, you know, laugh about that tournament. And, you know, that tournament you played in in the Czech Republic, your first one. So you, you were lucky. You got one in Europe and one yeah. in Canada. And Halifax was crazy in O3. But, but in O2, in Raditz Kralova, we were all staying in that hotel the food was terrible. Remember that? Like everything was boiled. So I, I actually bought a big pot and was making pasta for myself. And I wound up cooking for a bunch of the players. Remember like. I do remember guys, that. Yeah. 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 Guys, like, can you make me a plate of spaghetti? Cause the, the food downstairs. So, bad. so I, I was making food for myself and, and then, well, I got in trouble cause I was playing cards with them. I, I taught Rick Nash how to play hearts. Awesome. For man. money. And, and Stan Butler, the coach, was not happy that I was playing cards with Jay Harrison and Rick Jay Nash Harrison. and those guys. So I had to, yeah, I had to tone it down a bit. Hey, talk about Stan Butler uh, a little bit. He was, so just a brief little story. We did Christmas exchange gifts the night before, like our first game. And Jarrett Stoll had, had me as the gad gift. So Stoley was buying me a gift. Now, it was just all jokes, right? You buy some guy like an ugly Christmas sweater or whatever. Well, Stoley gave me... A uh, six pack of like Kolsch beer, like Czech beer, a pack yeah. of cigarettes, and like I don't know what else he gave me, but <laughs> so so he's like, here's Uppy, you know, here's some beers and whatever for him, and, and Stan Butler's like kind of looking at me, and he's like, he's like, really? I didn't know. It. He's a devil boy. 
So Stan Butler, the whole fucking tournament was calling me devil boy. Like I, I couldn't go on the ice. Like, so I'd go on the ice and he'd call me back off or he'd be like, devil boy, you're up. Yeah. Do you recall uh, my draft? So my draft. Yes. So I'll let Gord tell the story about my draft, but Nashville is up and picks me at sixth overall and he's doing the voice. So do you remember yeah, what he said? And I think I, and I think I said devil boy. Yeah. The <laughs> devil boy's going to Nashville. Like I'm like, <laughs> devil boy's going to Nashville. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, well, I probably shouldn't have said that. No, but, but, then was, I, but yeah. even before the draft, cause that, cause that was, uh, your draft was Oh two. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 2002. So it was right before Halifax. Cause, you're, cause, you're, cause the, your late birthday, right? Yep. Yep. So, um, so prior to that draft, you came to the Stanley Cup final. They brought a bunch of the top prospects to the Stanley Cup final, Detroit versus Carolina. And you were in Detroit. Uh, no, no, we went Carolina. to Carolina. Yeah, Loops, we me, Nash, Bowmeister. Yep. Yeah. And, and so and so I said, hey, devil boy. And, and again, I got you know, all these NHL guys around. I had to kind of rein it back in. But um, that was a funny trip because, because you were there. The draft prospects were there. And um, there was a contest winner from uh labats they had uh they had this thing where if in a case of beer if you got like a, a gold stanley cup you want a trip to the stanley cup final so this this father and son from newfoundland came down to carolina and they were they were kind of fish out of water they didn't really know anybody so the league asked me if i would come down and meet them and, and so i went down and and uh <laughs> And like I say, it was a father and son. And I said, how did you guys win this? He goes, oh, yeah, the boy bought a box of beer at the, at the liquor store. And the guy from the box said, no, 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 sir. No, no, sir. Your 16-year-old son did not buy a case of beer. That was, that was you bought the case. Remember, you bought the case of beer. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. um, so that was a fun. But I just remember, like, uh, you guys, I remember you guys looking around at the final because they had you right down by the glass, remember? And, for and the Pavel tr- Datsuk, yeah, and Pavel Datsuk scored an unbelievable goal. And you guys were all like, you know, looking on it, and you know, then the, good not league. long after you're inside that glass. Well, it was it was I believe Larry Onoff scored in triple overtime that game. The it was so, yeah. The professor scored, and then uh, Keon, Dave Keon, who was uh, in charge of the NHL at the time, like Dave so, Keon Jr. Dave, Dave, Dave Keon, Keon Jr., yeah. who's always in the box in Toronto. He he. The night before this game, he gave us mistakenly he gave us the NHL credit card to go have dinner, so we went to Hooters. And we, me, Lupul. Why wouldn't you? Me, Lupul. Why wouldn't you go to Nash, Bowmeister, um, Pierre Marc Bouchard? <laughs> we're, we're in control of like this, you know, the team credit card. And we went and had just a, you know, a good night out. And then that was Raleigh. I love that you went to Hooters. Yeah, of course. It was right across the street from the hotel. So, um, Gordo, I want to ask you just, you talk about Europe and stuff like that. And, and from a guy who never played in it, but as a fan now, when it's in Canada, <laughs> I think it's the best. Do you think it's still important? I, I know COVID now, but when we move forward, you still you think it's important to to have the tournament in Europe and in Czech Republic yeah. and Sweden and places like that? Sure. I think the biggest myth about the World Juniors that, con- that fans in Europe don't care. There was there was just a three way bidding war in Sweden for uh, for the rights. Jonas Brodin from the Minnesota Wild said the other day it's the biggest thing in Sweden. Like people are up in the middle of the night watching. It's it's huge. Finland when Russia played Canada in the gold medal game in the 2020 tournament, like 38 million people watched in Russia. It was one of the highest rated sporting events of the year. So yeah, I think it's really important. And it's, I, I just think it's a, it's a great event. And, um, you know, I, I think that, you know, in, in my business, um, you're very fortunate if you get um, a property or an event that is, you know, that you're very closely attached to. And, I, and I'm very honored. It, it honestly, like, it's funny, Shane, what you said, you know, earlier but uh, literally not a week goes by that someone doesn't say that to me that, you know we all watch you on boxing day or we all watch you new year's eve or our family all get and that's a huge honor to me that's that's one of the nicest things that people can say you know as opposed to stop standing on my foot you know which is what <laughs> also what people say to me um how many color guys have you been through in your in your tenure for this? Because I had Pierre Maguire with you for two years, and you know I always think when well, I hear you know, Pierre, you had, you had Gary Green the first year, Gary Green the first year in Czech, Pierre yeah. was in Halifax. Yeah, so so Gary Green, yeah, uh, Pierre, then Ray, and we'll see how long Ray lasts. Like I drove the first two off, so we'll see how long Ray lasts. <laughs> How was it working with Pierre? I, listen, I love Pierre. He was so good to me throughout my career. Anytime he did my games and I would talk to him after, bump into him. I, I love Pierre. How was it working with him in, in that perspective as a color guy? Well, great, to put great enthusiasm for it. He did a lot of work. You know, I mean, the world junior is a lot of work. So you got to show up prepared. And you always, I'm very lucky that he and, he and Ray are both super prepared, you know, for long-term uh, broadcast partners I've had. Like, 
they, you never worry that the guy next to you isn't prepared. I want to ask you another question. I'll be, you can maybe answer this too because you actually played in the tournament. And, and Gordon, you've seen tons of them. And the, the pressure that's put on these Canadian kids at this age, through your experience, do you think it, it, it's a good thing for them now? And do you think it helps them moving on to their NH, NHL career, how much pressure is on them to win a gold medal? Well, I think a couple of things. I think there's, a, there's an attitude in Canada of kind of gold or bust. And, and you know, Scotty, you, you played in two tournaments where Canada lost the gold medal game. And, look, the other teams are trying too, and the other teams have great players too. And I think that's to, to, to say gold or bust is, is kind of a, a disservice to other countries. Um, I think there's – I mean, look, the pressure on the Swedish kids, they haven't won the tournament since 2012. You know, the, the Russians haven't won since 2011. There's, there's lots of pressure on those kids too. We're just more familiar with it in Canada because we see it more often. But, um, no, I, I think – Look, the, the players today, there's been a progression, you know, as you go through it. And, you know, Scotty, you were part of it sort of 20 years ago on this. You know, the, the players are way more prepared when they get to the NHL for dealing with the media, dealing with fan pressure, dealing with television, all of that, partly because of these tournaments and the under 18s and everything else they do. Yeah, no, I agree. Like, uh, did you feel it like you in Halifax, yeah. I'd say? You guys yeah. must have felt it, right? Like, well, fine. yeah, as. Uh, you're always expected to win as a Canadian, especially on home turf. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I remember for us, it was, you know, we had some returning guys. We did not get Rick Nash or Bowmeister or Steven Weiss right. to come play with us in, in, um, in Halifax who played with us a year before and who were still eligible. But you just, you know, everything gets mounted. And I would say the pressure uh, of, of, you know, not winning, it, it affects more goaltenders, I think, moving forward into yeah, their maybe, professional yeah. career than, than mostly the players. Like I forget who m- might've mentioned this. It might've been Bob McKenzie one time talking about it, but it takes a goalie after losing, you know, that final game, the heartbreak, it takes them like a few years to kind of jump into the NHL at like a full, like I think flurry went through it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Fle- cause Fleury, remember you had flurry in Halifax. I so, did. So he was flurry, yeah. and ha- flurry in Halifax was what? 18. I think he was, he's a late birthday too. Yeah. Had the yellow pads. Yeah. Yeah, because you're because you're a late birthday, right? You're a you're yeah. October. Yeah, he was drafted two year, I believe, two years after me. Because um, he played so the he next was, year where Braden Coburn shot it off his. Yeah, yeah but he was he was he'd already he'd already been drafted by Pittsburgh. Then he was drafted in 03. Okay. Yep. He was drafted in 03 because he was a he was a late birthday in eighty four. So he's a late eighty four, like he's like a November born or something. You're October, right? Mm-hmm. So so guys born after September fifteenth have to wait the extra year. So Fleury had the breakout tournament in uh, in Halifax. He was unbelievable. Remember unbelievable, that? yeah. Yeah, and then the next year he comes back. He'd hardly played that year. You know, he'd been sitting in a hotel room in Pittsburgh. He hardly played. And then got to the gold medal game and, and again, had again Canada had the lead in the third period and, and lost the United States. I think it is hard. And I think that, you know, it, it's 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 – it's single elimination hockey. It's tournament yeah. hockey with a single elimination. So I always say, you know, the greatest NHL team ever assembled was Scotty Bowman's Montreal Canadiens team in the, in the late eight, the late seventies. They went 16 and three in the play or 14 and three in the playoffs. When like they lost three games. So, but in those tournaments, you lose at the wrong time and you're done yeah. or you lose the gold medal. So I think that's, that's what we love about it is the, the excitement of that and the sort of razor's edge, you know, <laughs> like if you'd played that, if you played that Russian team in 02 in a seven game series, you probably win it. Yeah. I think the 03 team, the Russians probably win that series. Yeah, the Russians. Now, that good. was Ovech that was Ovechkin as a 16 year old and yeah. And um but but you know what I mean? Like I, I just think it's it, that's what's exciting about it. But unfortunately, you know, in the era of social media, it's it's taken an ugly turn at times. That would be fun to see a best of seven, like back, like of Canada versus Russia back yeah. in the day. So that even would, like a be best cool. of three. That'd be cool. Even to watch. a best of three. Well, I mean, the Canada, the Canada Cup in '87 was as good as it got. Right? Yeah. Three, six, five games. You know, I wow. mean, it was unbelievable. Gordo, I got to ask you. You've had some. You've had some legendary calls when they win the gold, gold medal. Like going into the gold medal game, did, did you have it prep what you're going to say when they won, or, no. or is it just spontaneous? No. Or how, how did that work for you? Never, never, never do that. I just Never. always sort of, you know, people have asked me this in 09 in the semis when Canada uh, beat Russia. They, they tied the game with five seconds to go. Jordan Eberle scored. Yeah, I remember that call. Cool. I, I said, you know, can you believe it? Yeah. Oh, did you script that? Yeah. 
I sat in my hotel room in the morning and thought, yeah, if he tied up in five <laughs> seconds to go, I'll say. Uh, <laughs> Good no, point. You're Good just, point. You're just, you're just in the moment. And um, I remember, so the golden goal that Canada scored in 08 in the tournament in, uh, again, in the Czech Republic was Matt Halischuk scored. Um, and I totally guessed. It was a mad scramble. And what you do when a goal is scored, you kind of go based on the reaction of people on the ice. So like last, you know, I did a game last week between Toronto and Edmondson where um, a, a puck was tipped. And you could tell because the guy that tipped it reacts right away. He knows he got it. Well, in this case, Halicek, Halicek was kind of the first guy out of the scrum to raise his arms. So I'm like, you know, Halicek, golden goal for Canada. And I look at Pierre like, is it Halicek? He goes, <laughs> <laughs> Let's so hope it so. A, it, was a total, it was a total guess, but I was right. Yeah. Well, that's only minted in for in Canadian history. So you, you would hope it's Yeah, right, yeah, right? yeah. Um, Gordo, I want to ask you about Bob McKenzie. Now I, I turn on TSN, he's drinking margaritas. And oh, I, I guess, saw that. Oh, yes. I, it's yeah. unbelievable, but, um, I got a lot of respect for Bob. How much hard work has he put in over the years with this tournament? Oh. Because you talk about research and, and doing yeah. some digging, like guys, an ultimate pro. Yeah, he really is. And, uh, I've been lucky to work with him for 31 years now. And we've spent a lot of Christmases on the road together and, and a lot of funny stories and, and, Two, two of my favorite Bob McKenzie stories are about the World Junior. So the, the 95 tournament was in Red Deer, uh, is in Alberta. And so one of the games was in Calgary. And Canada beat the Czechs like 7-5. to five. Jamie Rivers pinched and scored a goal. And the whole bench was like, no, no. Oh, great goal, Jamie. And then the <laughs> next game was in Edmonton. So it's like 30 below. And all these fans with tournament ticket packages are driving from Calgary to Edmonton. And there's this big caravan of people driving up the highway. And some of them are leaning out the windows, like shirtless, waving flags. And it's like 30 below. And we're driving along. And Bobby looks at me and goes, you all birds are nuts. (laughs) Just just nuts. But the other one was uh, the 99 tournament. The 99 tournament was in Winnipeg. And and Bobby and I are having Christmas dinner together at the hotel in Winnipeg. So he's sour. Cindy and the kids aren't there yet. And he's bitter. And, you know, it's it's Christmas Day. And it's, you know, we're eating in a hotel bar like it's just grim right and and so this agent comes bopping up hey guys you know i'm i'm new in the agent business i got this 16 year old kid from slovakia you're the, he's unbelievable like you're he's gonna be a superstar well uh, gives me his card and the guy walks away and bops like 16 year old kid like who's he kidding like, it's the world junior like what does he know <laughs> two nights later in brandon it's hosa canada canada plays slovakia marion gabarik has like four breakaways and Roberto Luongo has to stand on his head in a zero-zero tie <laughs> with the Slovaks. Like it was unbelievable. And halfway through the second period, Bob turned to me and says, "Hey, uh, you got that agent's number?" <laughs> it, was, it was Alan Walsh. Oh wow! The the agent was Alan Walsh. And yet he had Gabrick, and Gabrick was just electric in that tournament, right? And and the Slovaks actually won the bronze that year. And their celebration winning the bronze is maybe as good as any gold medal celebration I've ever seen. Like they were just over the moon. I mean, you know, they just gained their independence like six years earlier. I think it was their first or second year in the top group. Like it was unbelievable. Wow. That's incredible. That's, Gabrick, he was so nasty. I, I was guessing as you were saying that, I was thinking Marion Hosa. Yeah, yeah. And then, you know. Yeah, Hosa's a little, Hosa's a little sooner, a little earlier than that. Goro, I want to ask you, I asked Craig Button this last week and, and you've watched a lot of world juniors, obviously. And, and I spent a little bit of time in Finland and, I told Uppy and Loops, like, watch out for these Finnish kids, man, the, how hard they work over here and how much they love to play. Like, how much growth have you seen from that country over the years in the World Juniors? Well, they punch above their weight better than anyone, right? Country of five and a half million people. Uh, you know, they, they have this flair for the dramatic. You know, they won the gold medal in 98 in overtime. They won the gold medal um, on home ice in uh, in 2016, you know, in, in extra in overtime. Uh, they just seem to have this flair for it. And they won it in 2019 with a late goal against the United States. I just think, yeah, they're great. Now, did you do the, uh, when you were training over there, Obi, did you do like the carrying the guys up the stairs with a guy on your back? And well, I mean, like, the poor guy Gordo, who had to carry over. Gordo, Gordo, Gordo. <laughs> I mean, basically that's what we did. I mean, I went there halfway through the year. I was skiing in Aspen. And the next thing I know, I got a phone call from my agent. You want to go to Finland? I'm like, okay. Um, yeah, every morning we ran the stairs. We worked out ridiculously hard. And I was just like, I joked with them like they're not paying you guys enough to be doing all this stuff, but they're they're hardcore. Yes. Yeah. So so Brian Marchman, uh, his dad John Marchman, who was 
I don't know if you guys ever met John Marchman, the, the funny, funny guy. And the, the sons that chip off the old block. So he's like, oh, guard, you know. Um, Brian goes over there and he's carrying fins up the stairs. He's carrying fins across the water. He's carrying, you know, no more of that. Yeah, it was it, it was gnarly. Like they they have that mentality of kind of like uh, like a military where they just kind of get in there and do their thing all day every day. I'm like, you guys don't take a day off over here, or what's going on? So, um, like that. So, but I, I think the you know obviously everyone trains and everything else, but the the feeling they have in Finland that, that I think the word is sisu they call it like it means collective courage or collective guts, and and they have that. You know, they just. They, whatever the team is, World Junior, World Championship, Olympics, they just have this group mentality and this toughness that, that goes with them. And great people, like kind and funny and and awesome. And you know, my, my buddy in Finland says that you know when the when the six feet of social distancing is over, the Finns will go back to their usual fifteen. <laughs> <laughs> All I, all I know is those guys. Since I was kids, since I was a kid playing international hockey, played the same way we did. Like they yeah. had the same, like go to the net hard, finish hard, play just kind of dirty on edge. Like yeah. they were, like the the Rutus, like the they they were oh, big and Rutu. thick and like you know they, they if if you took a night off in a tournament like the World Juniors, like they they'd get you, they'd snag you. Um, Sebastian Aho, we, we we remember Ray and I saw Sebastian Aho warming up in the hallway before a game. At the time, he's like 150 pounds. And you're like, well, that, that poor kid's going to get destroyed. And then he turns out to be one of the best players in the game. And Ray comes out of there thinking, like, that guy's a player. Yeah. Like, that guy is just – he's just a hockey player. And I think that's the great thing about it, you know, is just is seeing players at that age and see them, how they mature. Like, even you, even you, Uppy, like, how you've matured. Look at you now. Like, you know, you're – I know. I'm buttoned up. I got the sweater on. I got Santa Claus you're, you're, beside me. Like, you and Obi, you, you and Obi are, like, adulting. He's a father. I'm a, I'm a he's, father he's a now. father. He's got a beautiful oh, baby girl. He's he's a real adult now, Gordo. I don't know what happened. I don't know where time went. C- can you believe it? <laughs> hey, boy. Um, so you're in Edmonton. The excitement in and around the tournament is building up. Uh, they, they, you know, fans weren't in the building last year. I remember in Halifax just that excitement that, you know, we used to walk from our hotel underneath this, you know, underground tunnel through the mall. It was probably a 15, 20 minute walk. There would be people lined up to kind of, you know, cheer us on after games, congratulate us or, you know, witness our, our silver medal. Um, what are you expecting in Edmonton as far as, you know, that that Canadian fan base ready for World Junior Hockey again? Well, I think there's just so much pent up demand, right? I mean, with no fans last year, just that that excitement to see it again, to be part of that again, to, you know, to be in the building and, and all of that is just fantastic. And I, you know, you talk about 03 in Halifax, and I, you know, I remember being upstairs ready to call the game. And before you guys came on the ice, it was crazy. The, the, my water bottle was actually like vibrating because the fans were cheering so loud. And you guys were right under the stands, right? Like, we you, could feel it in the room. There was sh- it was shaking in the room. Your stall was literally moving. You could feel the bass from just the crowd noise, not the music. It was, there was something special. It was wow. crazy. I've only yeah, other. I, I felt that in Washington in the playoffs one time, where the bench was like moving, like sitting on the bench in between like a period, yeah. a whistle. It was incredible. Yeah, and I think that's the that's the thing you love about it. You know that that moment before the game when you don't know what the outcome is going to be, and there's just all this pent up excitement. I always find sometimes that the the, the crowd kind of wears themselves out before the game. You know, they, they're all then they kind of they need a, they need a nap sort of. <laughs> Just to calm themselves down a little bit, Gordo. I actually had a, this question. Um, I don't know if it's it's Halifax for me when I can remember. What what's the best best atmosphere throughout your career in Canada? Would it be Halifax? It's kind of a tough question, but yeah, right up there. Uh, boy, there's been so many. I mean, I I think Saskatoon uh, was was unbelievable too. Um, you know, uh, certainly Vancouver in '06. Uh, you know. That was the first one. I'm trying to think. Uh, well, Winnipeg in '99 was at the old Winnipeg Arena. Yeah, I remember that one. But but oh, but oh six was the first one in a in a modern NHL like a full NHL building like eighteen thousand, you know, on the whole bit. And and I think that was really something. I mean, you know, the players are just Ottawa in '09 too. Like I remember Danny Kerman is now the uh, officiating supervisor for the IHF, and we used to do our opening on the ice. 
So Pierre and I are standing getting ready to do the opening and there's, you know, 18,500 people just going off. And Danny Kerman was officiating the game. He's from Switzerland. And he just looks around the building and just like, holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> it's just like, like he was just like, no, oh, he'd never been in a building like that. Yeah. You know, it, it's just such an unbelievable moment. It's so true. Yeah, I there's mean, so many great moments in and around this tournament, and it's what we all get excited I for. I mean, the fact that, you know, we're two ex-NHLers and we're excited as anyone to watch the World Juniors, you know, come Boxing Day. Like, that's, to me, the ultimate culminant for the for that tournament. Yeah. So so we got to ask you, is it, uh, if you could, if you could see into the future right now, you know, January, I believe it's January 5th or 6th is the final. Yeah, who yeah, do you, who yeah, do you yeah. expect to be competing for the gold medal? I don't make predictions. I just, I, I you just, just call the and, match. Yeah. yeah just, just, just wait and see what happens. That's, that's what I like about it. I don't, I don't have preconceived notions. There's lots of good teams here. I think the exciting thing about this tournament is the, is the undrafted players we're going to see. Yeah. You know, Shane Wright, who will probably go first overall this year. Connor Bedard, who will probably go first overall in 23. Matt Michkov from Russia. Like we're going to see some tremendous young players. Owen Power, who was first overall last year is here. So I, I just think I, I just can't, I mean, the, the great thing about it is it's so unpredictable, right? That's that's it's, it's kids, you know. So it, you guys played in the NHL. You, in the NHL, you're kind of like this, right? Like good times, bad times. You kind of just you level it out. Yeah. These kids are like this, right? Like just <laughs> my goodness. Like it's, this is the greatest thing that ever happened. This is the worst thing that ever happened. You know, like, <laughs> Gor, Gor, Gordo, I had a couple games like that in the NHL too. That were like that. She loves me. She loves me not. She loves me. Uh, that's great. Well, Gord. Yeah, thank you so much, Gord. Um, love listening to you. To you. You've been a great ambassador for hockey and the World Juniors, buddy. So keep it up. We'll be listening, watching Boxing Day. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, Gord. Always a pleasure seeing you this time of year. Merry Christmas to you and your family. To OB and Devil Boy. <laughs> <laughs> up dog. Good life. I got a tarp on right here at Henley. Let it breathe a little bit, eh? Let, nice. it, let it air out a little bit. Let I mean, they rock and roll with the t-shirts, fella. Let they it air have out. Them Gotta let it air out. Let it air out. Air that baby out. Uh, there's so many things I love about good life, but they're team guys. Team guys. Tell me why even more. Tell me why. Team guys and team girls. Team guys and that team girls. That girl girls. stuff is, is awesome. For all you guys listeners out there, there's Melissa and the boys. Talk about how good they look and how nice the tarps feel. Do not hesitate. Go to goodlifeclothing.com, jump in the women's section and fire, a fire, just shoot fire at the website and get your girl some just amazing clothes for Christmas. Comfy, what do you think? Comfy oh, stuff, bud. It is comfy, comfy stuff. great colors. Your girl will love you forever, even though you've been a bad, bad son. Yeah, listen, you get her on the couch with the comfy clothes on, the glass of wine, and the fireplace, over. throw on Yellowstone or whatever you're watching. Good it's life, game, baby. set, match. And the team guys, glue guys, they are at Good Life. Classy. For a limited time only, Good Life is supporting the 11 Fund, Jimmy Hayes' fund. And at checkout, use the promo code MISSINJIMMY, that's M-I-S-S-I-N, Jimmy, for 20% off your purchase order, and 10% of the proceeds will be going to the 11 Fund. So thank you to our friends at Good Life, and thank you to our listeners for your continued support. Broadway, Jimmy Scoops. Up dog, baby. World Juniors, Gord Miller. That's a good get for the boys. Nice to a- get a, nice to get a, uh, you know, the voice. The, the voice. voice. 30 years. 35 years is the thing I think he's been doing this That's for. That's fucking crazy. But you think of it, our parents, you know, our, you know, kids, kids. The World Juniors this time of year, bud, it's like open gifts on Christmas morning, isn't it? I got it right here, If bud. you like hockey. December 26th. Boxing, Boxing Day, Boxing baby. Day. Czech Republic versus Canada. I'm going to take that in. I'm going to be watching that. I'm going to make Porter watch it if I can get him to sit down. He's like you. He doesn't sit down for more than two seconds. Well, he is also three. He's and he's four. <laughs> buzzing around. And then up dog, you know, in Aspen at your, you know, maybe at your house, December 29th against the Yermans. The Yermans are coming. What time is that game? Stand by. It says upcoming. Doesn't have the time yet. Okay. And uh, then, listen, let's have a little day party then. December 31st, New Year's Eve, Canada, Finland. That's going to be a good one. We you talked know, about how crazy those Finns you are. Know you know Cody's going to want to watch these games. Yeah, for sure. So he's got a nice shack. Listen, there too. Gord Miller didn't want to give us a prediction. I respect that. I'm going to fucking give a prediction right now. Canada, Canada gold. U.S. What do you Final. boys want to bet back there? Camus. Camus, a bottle of Camus. Wow. Let's go. 
Maxi and Binger, you just went up a little notch in my fucking book because I had a backup. I was going to say a bottle of Jameson, but <laughs> Camus, Camus it is. It's on. I'm going to say Canada, Canada, USA final. This is our year ups. I don't know. Really. I, I, I love Mason McTavish. Um, I love what Craig said a couple weeks ago about they can play the game anyway. They can play her fast. They can play her physical. They can play her tight checking. I, it gave me goosebumps last week. I'm in. Mason McTavish is my guy. I'm watching him. For people out there, watch Mason McTavish. He's old school pro. He's going to have a tournament for the up. He's going to have a tournament. Is he going to play with uh, that Jake Neighbors? That kids, Jake Neighbors kids played unbelievable tough. for the Blues. Too. Yeah, he's tough and plays hard. He yeah. was playing like fourth line, like up dog minutes for the uh I didn't the think those, I didn't think the Ducks should have sent Mason back, but yeah. I guess it's good to go play in this tournament, get her going, um, and I'm excited yeah. to watch Owen Power. Like I said yeah. last week, yeah, it's going to be a great, a great tournament. To all the kids out there, enjoy this. I'm you'll, going. Uh, I'm going first period over a Canada check. You'll first create memories. Over. These boys are going to create memories they'll always have. And you and I, if we win some cash, we will too. I'm betting them every game. By Princey, the way, can you hear us, fella? Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming you'll be taking that game in Boxing Day. What will be your drink of choice that night? Did I already ask you that? Or what, what, what will you be having around the campfire in Alberta? <laughs> I like your crown too, oh, so I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm a crown guy, but I like my Captain Spiced and Coke or Ginger Ale. Wow. I'm looking to, I wonder how these Austrian kids are going to do, Uppy. I play in Austria. Their program isn't quite as um, potent as Finland. They're like, uh, they're ready to go to war, those guys. These guys, they're ready to just go have a nice cold beer. They like their beers in Austria. <laughs> our, our GM there, I can't remember his name. He was a fucking beauty. He was just like, good looking cat. Didn't you have a nice... I'd always, uh, I'd always see him having beers there. You had a nice young one there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> you did okay over there. <laughs> I, know. I know you You did. like put me on the spot. Right? Yeah. I like looking across you and knowing that. You know what? I actually met this girl in Austria. Um, Skier, she right? Was a, no, she was an Olympic kayaker. Kayaker. Double kayaks. Good, strong back. So this girl, I mean, she used to chirp me about not, like, working out enough. <laughs> Calm down. Because all they did was work out, these kayakers. And I felt bad for her because they kept pushing the Olympics and pushing the Olympics. And then last year, she finally got her chance to uh, represent Austria in the two-woman kayak. How'd she do? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just know that she went. Did you wish her good luck? I think I might have sent her a message. Hey, go nice. get them. You know, keep the head down or whatever. What are you doing kayaking? Do you keep her down or do you keep her... No, no, no. She, yeah. You ever try to get a kayak? Focused. You ever try to get a kayak? No, but I'd probably go tits up if I. I did. was just gonna say she, yeah. her, and her, her, and her teammate would. They post stuff on Instagram of normal, average people from Austria trying to get in their kayak, and they go fucking arse over apple it's like cart. Qualified every time. captain. Yeah. Boom. Gone. Ding. See. I couldn't fit in the in, in the thing. You could. You might be a good kayaker. You think? I get the shoulders going. Maybe. I hate the rower though. <laughs> the rower's terrible. But I guess that's not row. It's not rowing exactly. Kayak. She would work out. You get so the double hard. whammy. She would work out so hard. Those Olympic athletes, man. But and they're, and they're getting ready for it now. I'll be like, we yeah. worked hard to get to the NHL. But imagine training for for four years to play to do one event. I could not. No. Right, like so to all the Olympic athletes. Good congratulations, up dog. Merry Christmas, fella. Um, Princey, Merry Christmas. Thanks, fellas. Up you, I'll see you Binger, now. Binger, Max, Maxi. Merry Christmas. Thanks for all your hard work, boys. Listeners, Merry Christmas. USA is going down, Maxi, Binger. I can't wait for next ball, Camus. You can find all our podcasts on YouTube, on Spotify. On, on Apple, Apple Podcasts. Wherever, wherever you find, you find your podcast platform. Your podcast. That's what people say on the podcast I listen to. On your podcast platform. So we'll be, uh, our next one we'll be doing from Aspen. I'll see you in Aspen. I'll see Get you there. Get that wine fridge stocked at your house, okay? Enjoy Christmas Get with your family. I can't friend. wait to see Porter, Smitty, Mom and Dad, Peter, Roxy, Katie, Tommy. It's going to be cold there, though. Fuck. Cold, cold, cold. Anyways, Merry Christmas. Everyone out there, thank you for support. Updog, missing curfew. Mm-hmm.